What is going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to set up one of these MKS TFT screens. Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be messing around and I'm going to be showing you how to set up one of these TFT screens. I'm going to show you how to set it up with a 32-bit uh, uh, control board. Uh, I'm using the MKS S base, but this does work on uh, like ramps boards. This works on like uh, all the other MKS boards. I know it works on like smoothie boards and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to show you how to set this up, configure it, and get it working and controlling your printer in no time. All right, guys. So I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of this one. Uh, this is a uh, MKS TFT 28. Uh, so that means it's a 2.8 inch screen across here. Um, it's all version 1.3. I don't really know whether or not they've got any more or other versions of this. Um, uh, this is a reasonably oldish one, but I mean, they all sort of work the same and they're all pretty much the same. So we have here on the back, we have a whole bunch of different IO and bits and pieces. Uh, so up here we have a connection, so you can actually connect a, a Wi-Fi addition onto this, so you can uh, control this board wirelessly. Uh, we also have additional 12 volt power if we need it. Uh, we have a reset board and pause button. Uh, there's nothing too major else on here. We have our main uh, connector for connecting directly to our motherboard or our, our 3D printer board. Uh, we also have an external SD card uh, breakout over here. Uh, so you can also connect, uh, I think, up to two or three different SD cards to the device. Um, we have our main SD card built onto the device. Uh, we also, we've also got a, a USB over here. It's just a regular USB 2.0 port, uh, but you can use that for moving uh, USB or files from your computer directly to this without removing the SD card, but you can print directly off the SD card. Um, some more things to f uh, pay attention to is this little connector down here. This is our 5 volt and 12 volt selector. So if you're using a ramps, you are going to uh, plug the jumper in just like that. I'll let that focus. It's going to focus. Uh, so it goes across the two top pins. It's a four pin header. Um, but for most 32 bit boards, we're using 5 volt. So we uh, connect that to the five volt jumper there, which is just across the uh, top left and the bottom left pin. There is also another little header here. Um, I do believe that's for debugging and UART, I think. Um, you're not really gonna be touching that at all. Um, so I wouldn't be worrying about that. Um, we've also got another debug and JTAG port up here at the top. Um, and there's some other port over here that we're not overly concerned about. Um, so apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. It's a pretty sleek design. Um, it's fairly thin, so you can fit it in pretty much, you know, like a fairly small, narrow um, thing, like a little uh, case, whether or not you want to enclose it entirely or whether or not you just want to put some mounting brackets on it when I used to use this. Um, I don't use it anymore just because I'm running everything through Octopi, but this is a great, great alternative to have something running um, running the uh, control board without having too much, uh, not really any configuration or setup problems. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how I'm hooking this up to the Hypercube. Now this board in here is a MKS S-Base. Um, you don't actually have to communicate or, uh, sorry, modify the config of the uh, the actual control board on the S-Base and most 32-bit boards. Uh, from what I know of at least, because all we're doing is we're actually communicating over UART or technically USB. Um, I think there are a small amount of settings you can change in the config to allow like other uh, screens and stuff to work, but it's pretty straightforward. You can see this cable I'm sort of dangling around here. I'm gonna put a graphic up on the screen, but it's just connects down here to um, the, I believe it is the auxiliary one port. Uh, there are a couple other auxiliary ports at the back there, but we don't need to worry about them. We're auxiliary one um, on the S-Base, and I'll put a whole bunch of different um, things up on the screen now for you guys to see which board and where it might be plugged into. So, I mean, I'm sorry, this is zoomed in so you guys can see, but we have our, it's just a little four pin. Um, 
and we're gonna connect it up to our board here. This is drastically out of focus. Oh, it's come in focus. So we connect the other to our main thing there. There's only one way this thing can go, so pretty straightforward. Just plugs in like that, that's it. You don't have to do anything else. All we have to do is stick an SD card in it on the side there, away we go. Alrighty guys, so uh, jumping here onto my computer, we've got, um, I've got my uh, SD card over here, plugged in, um, it's got nothing on it. Um, it did have something on it, but I, uh, I just removed all that crap. Um, and over here we have the newest TFT 28 and 32 uh, version of the firmware. Um, I've also got a, a text file here. Um, the basic README, it's alright. I mean, it's a little bit of a different uh, mismatch of different characters and stuff, so it's a little bit hard to understand, which is why I am making this video for you guys. Um, so first things first, uh, we need the images. Alright, so in this version of the release, we need a particular image uh, file set that has uh, different... Um, different files with the, the different, uh, I mean, they're just images, really. Um, you can actually modify these if you really, really want to. Um, they're all just fancy little images. Uh, you can do different styles. They provide you with uh, blue, red, and Windows 8 style. Um, I'm interested in the Windows 8 style, so I am going to grab that. So we just need to navigate to the folder that is MKS pick. We need to give that a copy and drag that or paste that directly into the main uh, into the main uh, directory of the uh, SD card. Uh, so next things next, we need font files. So I'm just going to take that directly from the font file. It needs to be the MKS underscore font file. Copy that, paste that. So we now have our fonts and our images. Uh, we need to update our firmware, so we are going to grab, I mean, I'm not entirely sure which one is best, uh, so we have classic, retro, and simple. Um, uh, I'm going to go with the retro one, I guess. I Really, they don't actually tell you all that much of it about the differences of these, uh, but we're just going to drop that one directly on here. Um, it needs to be MKS TFT. 28.bin it has to be that file name you cannot change the mks underscore pick or the mks underscore font or the bin file names if you don't it won't flash properly and you'll have a bad time i don't actually have a wi-fi thing but uh it is apparently recommended that you update your wi-fi uh, uh bin file so i'm going to drop that on there as well um I don't know how it updates Wi-Fi, whether or not it communicates through the Wi-Fi port and flashes that onto the other Wi-Fi part. Um, I'm just gonna put it on there so it's it's there if it needs to update. And the last thing we need to do is a config file. So we're gonna grab this uh, MKS underscore config, uh, the English one. I'm going to remove the underscore EN because it needs to just be MKS config. Uh, I'm not actually going to open that in that. We're going to open it in Notepad++ and get rid of all these other files that are open. So what we've got in here is, it's, it's a fairly basic and straightforward uh, config setting. Uh, it, it's not that confusing at all. Um, there's a lot of stuff here at the bottom where you can modify uh, bits and pieces to do with uh, like uh, images and display customization and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to mess around with that because we don't need to. Um, there are some custom functions you can do in here as well. Uh, most of them are just set to uh, like um, uh, G28X0, so home X, home Y, home Z. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, what we're more needing to check is up here at the top. So what type of printer are we using? Um, if you're using a Marlin printer, so something running like a 8-bit uh, Arduino setup with Marlin, like a ramp setup, uh, you can use one. 
uh, if you're using something similar you can I'm pretty sure you can use Repetier on the same sort of setup so you would use two we're using smoothie so we are going to be using three uh, what sort of machine do we have we have a normal machine we don't we're not using a Delta so we're going to use one the board rate so you want to set this to a particular board rate that's going to allow you to print at a set speed um, I know for a fact that my MKS S base is set up to have a board rate of uh, 11 52,000 um, so that's going to use three uh, this will change depending on your board in particular setup um, higher values are better but higher values can also cause some issues as well which is why I'm using uh, number three there um, multi-language uh, you can enable or disable this I'm just gonna leave that alone uh, so the language setting uh, it does have a couple of different language settings as you can see here we got Chinese uh, or simplified Chinese traditional Chinese English Russian and Spanish uh, obviously we're going to use English so that's set to three how many extruders do we have we have one extruder uh, we have do we have a heated bed I do so we're going to set that to, uh, to one uh, excuse me uh, the max temp target of the extruder and the he uh, heated bed so when you set preheats you can set this up um, I'm going to set this to 220 degrees um, well actually I'm going to set this a little bit higher maybe uh, 260 because uh, this is going to be the max target temperature so we, we really don't want the printer to exceed these values um, I don't print anything over a hundred on the uh, bed so we're going to be setting that to 100 uh, so the pause position um, I tend to not mess around with this it's just negative 1 negative 1 10 uh, this is just how it's gonna uh, provi uh, position itself uh, in the pause setup so in other words we're not going to say we're not going to move the X we're not going to move the Y but when we pause it we're just going to move the Z axis up 10 millimeters uh, this is to help prevent things like uh, the nozzle melting into a part if you pause it uh, which is really handy um, some advanced functions here um, so one of those ports I, uh, I mentioned on the back of the uh, board there you can actually have it set up to enable UPS support uh, so you can actually have a whole print process uh, when if you got your printer set up with a UPS uh, so if you know say your power goes out or whatever we can um, you can actually either have the printer running on a UPS or we can actually set it up so that it will pause the print, move the print head up and then shut the printer down um, so then it's all saved and then as soon as power is re-enabled it will re-go or just sort of reset itself and continue printing the part. Um, I don't have that set up so I'm not gonna have that so it's gonna be zero for no. Uh, power detection um, I am again gonna set that to no I'm not using that um, I mean it's set to MKS PWC uh, that pretty much is it allows it to know whether or not there's power or not and um, that's sort of like a UPS function um, enable auto off after printing uh, you can set that up if again if you're using a UPS and uh, power detection modules you can use that to sort of turn on and off the printer uh, the PVO signal used for a second nozzle. I'm not using a second nozzle. Um, you might be, so you can set that to one. Um, again, these are all sort of uh, real more advanced stuff that you don't really need to use while you're um, setting stuff up. Uh, in terms of filament changes, I tend to just leave this sort of stuff by itself. Um, you can modify it, but I just sort of leave it by itself. Uh, the leveling stuff so if you're going to use this to level you need to change these points to correctly uh, sort of show or correctly uh, move the print head to the correct spot without colliding with anything so even though my uh, build volume on the uh, hypercube is uh, 200 by 200 by 200 um, I tend to only set the build volume sort of a little bit smaller so that I don't ever run into that problem of the print head crashing into anything. Um, so I know for a fact that, uh, so these are X, Y points. So we'll do X25, oh, X25, Y25. Uh, then we're gonna go X180. I'm gonna actually do 160. 
Y25 so the Y is not moving. Uh, we're gonna do again 160. Oh, don't need to have in there. And then we're gonna go Y160, and then we're gonna do X25 Y160, um, and then. This is essentially, I think you, you're sort of setting it to like the middle of the bed on the last point. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just going to go 100, 100. Um, and then we can also set the movement speed as well. Um, I tend to just leave these by themselves. So what we've got over here is we've got all the Wi-Fi functions here. So what you can do is you can uh, tell whether or not it's going to have a Wi-Fi or not. Uh, then you can also... Um, you know, basic things like, are we turning the Wi-Fi on? We need to enter the Wi-Fi's name here. So this is where you would enter the uh, SSID or the name of your Wi-Fi. This is also where you would enter the password of your Wi-Fi. Um, again, this is in uh, this is in uh, plain text. So obviously you don't want people being able to come and see this. Uh, so obviously, I mean, if you're gonna use Wi-Fi, that's where you'd set it up and enter the password. Um, and then we have cloud services, so you can actually set this up. I believe you can use it to uh, communicate or uh, pull files directly from the cloud. Um, I guess that's where you can sort of set it up. You can add the uh, the uh, the actual uh, address there and what port it's communicating on. This is where you can set up uh, whether or not you're going to have a dynamic IP address or a static IP address. Uh, so if you're having a dynamic, it'd be one. If it's static, it's zero. Um, and then this is where you would set a static IP address um, for your printer. So, you know, uh, 192.168. whatever you know, you're setting it to. Uh, make sure you have the correct subnet mask, otherwise it won't work. Uh, so this is a uh, slash 24 uh, subnet mask. Um, and then your default gateway. Uh, so that is the IP address of your home router. Um, anything else down here is custom functions. I'm not going to jump into custom functions. It can get a little bit daunting sometimes, so I'm not going to bother with that. You can set up different movements and, uh, you know, like a preheat or um, maybe like a... Um, maybe you've got something like a, uh, a BL touch and you can set this up to do a list of... Um, sort of like a little list of scripts on a, uh, on a button. So you click a button and then it does a whole bunch of these... Um, a whole bunch of these different commands uh, so you can tell it to you know go probe the bed or whatever with a uh, with the BL touch or whatever um, you can also set up more functions here there is a more button so you can have I think up to roughly 12 or 14 um, functions uh, in total custom functions which is super handy um, now this is this is where you can change all sorts of different bits and pieces to do with the uh, the images um, inside the uh, like on those those image files and whatnot so there is one thing if you choose to use the red uh, the red images apparently you need to change uh, the background color so the background color uh, where is that I mean that's background I believe it is this one here the word background color uh, you need to set that to this. That's what your background color needs to be set if you're using the uh, red um, thing. I believe that. I think you need to do that for all of them. Um, I obviously don't need to do that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but that's pretty much it. There is nothing you really need to do that's overly complex. It's a matter of just setting your language um, setting some uh, max uh, some max temperatures um, and then uh, making sure that your communication types are set up correctly and your language is correct and apart from that it's a matter of taking the SD card and plugging it into the uh, SBase oh, sorry the uh, plugging it into the TFT and it will reflash the new firmware um, and load up just like it would normally and of course you just need to make sure that you uh, put that MKS underscore config into the uh, USB or the uh, SD card that you're using all right so now that we have our SD card plugged in it's now doing an update 
So it's now flashing all these different uh, image files and whatnot, uh, all the bin files and bits and pieces. Um, I do have to say, uh, you definitely should not choose the retro firmware because that seemed to have a whole bunch of problems and it wouldn't let me flash it onto this board. Um, I don't know whether or not that is actually just a problem with uh, that particular firmware, um, but we now have our updated uh, TFT screen. I'll show you the you know, plus X controls it, plus Y, it moves, Z minus, probably shouldn't have pressed that, I hope it doesn't crash into the bed, doesn't, then Z plus. Um, apart from that, it is that simple. Literally, drag and drop the firmware onto the SD card, plug it in, away you go. Communicates perfectly fine with the S-Base, um, you can print files from here, I don't have uh, any files on the card, um, I know you guys would like to see that, but it's, it's, it's really a matter of, it's just like printing from an SD card. It prints a file from an SD card. Um, we can home X, so we'll home, we can home Y. Um, I'm not gonna home Z, because I don't want it to crash into the bed. Um, but it, it's that easy, and we can do the leveling. Um, I'm not gonna do that for now. Um, but that is it. It's as simple as that. All right guys, so as you've just seen, it is super easy to set one of these guys up. Um, I know MP NKS is a little bit uh, controversial in certain spaces. I know that uh, Smoothieware and the guys that do the smoothie boards don't support NKS stuff. Um, really, they're just super cheap and really easy to use uh, devices. I mean, the smoothie stuff is all to do with the actual uh, S-Base control board. Um, not so much these uh, TFT screens. These things are super handy to use, uh, really reliable as well, um, as long as the firmware flashes on there properly. Uh, but apart from that, it is that simple. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, just remember that uh, you should hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell to know when I upload. Um, apart from that, make sure you guys leave a like and uh, I'll catch you guys later.